your hands so we let the congregation sing blessed be the name blessed be the Lord God would you lift your hands everywhere and let's worship him with that song from the depth of our heart to Blessed be the Lord, God Almighty, Almighty, who reigns forever. We sing, Blessed be the Lord. Open your mouth and worship Him. Open your mouth and magnify Him. Wherever you are, right where you are standing, in your homes, wherever you are following this meeting from, open your mouth, bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The creator of the universe, the I am that I am, the I am that I am, the ancient of days, the one who is strong and mighty, the one who is mighty in battle, the one who is mighty in battle. The one who is king of kings great amongst other gods can you reverence him can you bless him oh how wonderful how glorious is my say your God to thee how wonderful how glorious is my Savior God to me Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you tonight. All the testimonies and all the things that you have done in our lives and in our midst we are grateful that you've gathered us again in this third month it's another miracle service and a night of expectation i ask that you bless your people i ask that you touch their lives and let all the glory return to you in jesus mighty name you are going to pray before you sit down john chapter 14 verse 13 just before we sit down we are going to pray and ask the lord to do something for us today how many of you are expectant towards what god will do for you this evening i trust that god will meet us to the point of our expectations in jesus name and whatever you ask my in my name that i will do that the father may be glorified in the son so one major reason for why god will bless his people for why we will see the miraculous this evening for why god will move in his power and for the things that he will do aside from meeting your needs is so that the father will be glorified so God wants to showcase his power in your life to the end that Jesus be glorified. Now I want you on the strength of that revelation to lift your voice in 60 seconds and cry to the Lord for something that you will have him do for you in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and talk to him. Please pray. We are praying everywhere. Forget about any distraction around you and pray. It is in prayer that we receive. Lift your voice. Table your expectation. This evening. Open your mouth and ask him for a visitation. Are you praying at all? Are you praying at all? Please lift your voice and pray. When we come and we bow down at your feet, Lord Jesus, in your presence there is fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one to compare with you. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure. In worshiping, I take pleasure in worshiping. Lord, visit me. Bring a turn around in my life, a change of story. Do unto me as you have destined. Do unto me according to your word. Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah according to the time of life. And the Lord did for her as he has spoken. Do unto me as you have promised. Do unto me as you have said. Please pray, please pray, please pray, please pray.
You are here Moving in this place We worship you We worship you You are here And you're touching every line We worship you We worship you So we call you We make a miracle of His promise And light in the darkness That is who you are We make a sin We make a miracle of His promise Yes, Lord, we worship you. You are here, rearranging destiny. We worship you. We worship you. So we call you say. Six, six more seconds. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. You are not wasting your time praying. It's a way to prepare yourself and to build your faith for what is about to happen. Come on, let me hear your voice. If you are a believer, lift your voice. The psalmist says, From the depths of the earth will I cry. Come on, raise a cry to him. Come on, raise your voice to him. He hears. When we call, he hears when we call. Marahakatora man se babalahai, le paraka sota brande brekete ba karoda hasia, embrekete beroko supra hata kabara kali, embraka paraka soto boroko toya. Visit my family. A change of level. A change in circumstances. A change of my situation. For some of you, you need to cry and say, Lord, settle me. Settle me once and for all. He said, now the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory after that you have suffered for a while perfect you strengthen you establish you and settle you Lord settle me in my finances in my spiritual life in my family I need a change of story I need a change in level I have come before the King of Kings. I have come before the God of Gods. I have come before the Mighty One. 
please pray, please cry. Amongst the gods who is like me, you are glorious in holiness, careful in praise, who in wonders have Thank you, Father. Lord, we have come. Lord, we have come. Hear the cry of your people. And answer them speedily. Show up as a mighty one. Show up as the mighty one of Israel. Amazing God. Amazing God. You do my Amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God, lift your voice and make Amazing. you please be seated in the presence of the lord and welcome to march miracle service can we give the lord a big hand of praise such joy and honor to be in his presence and i am certain tonight that God will visit us and will do miracles in this place and he will take the glory forever and ever in Jesus name please I would like your heart to be open it is important it has a lot to do with you whatever God will do tonight it has a lot to do with your participation it has a lot to do with the openness of your heart and your being determined to receive from God. Let this not just be one other service. God is glorified when we bear fruit. God is glorified when by his mighty power we we'll keep rising from one level to another, from one dimension to another. Of the experience of his grace and of his mercy there are things that god will do in your life 
that is enough to preach a sermon to a whole city. There are things that God will do in your life that is enough to convict even the vilest unbeliever in your neighborhood that truly you serve a living God. The proof of the God you serve is the visibility of his mighty deeds in your life. And that is the reason why I believe that God is here tonight. God is more than ready to change someone's story tonight. God is more than ready to do a miracle that will cause you to wonder in amazement of the mightiness of the hand of God. There are miracles that the testimony is enough for one whole year. I don't know if you have ever experienced that. There are miracles that the testimony is enough for two years. It's like after that one, if God does nothing again, it's okay. Now, may God do such kinds of miracles in your life. In the name of Jesus. So let your heart be open. And be expectant at every point in this service. Of the great things that God will do. And I believe that the Lord will glorify his name in Jesus name. I want to share briefly from the word of God just to build our faith. And then we will pray. And trust God for what he will do today. I think the worship team peeped into what the Lord put in my heart to share today. And this, this little exhortation is going to be a powerful faith booster. It's going to open your eyes to see not only the creative dimension of God's power, but to see the mightiness of His power. So I just want you to open your hearts and let what we will share tonight produce a picture in our minds for us to be able to believe God so that when we rise up to pray, we will break into an atmosphere of miracles. The presence of God is already very strong in this place and I know that God will do us good in Jesus' name. Please title this very short exhortation, The God of the Now. Or for somebody in bracket, your miracle now. The God of the now. I want to show you something that will, some of you, this will be your key. And continually you will see the miraculous in your life. I didn't hear your Amen. For some of you, the little exhortation tonight will be the key that you have always been looking for to see the miraculous at work in your life again and again. In the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God is God's tool for the miraculous. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. There is nothing that God will do outside of his word. So it's not a waste of time for us to share briefly from the word. Faith comes by hearing and by and hearing by the word of God. If there is no word, then there cannot be faith. And if there is no faith, then there cannot be expectation. And if there is no expectation, then you cannot see the miraculous power of God. So that is the precedence. It starts with the word of God that is sent to you. The word of God creates the picture you need. You have to be able to see in God what you want to receive. It's not just a blind uh, 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 activity as it were no I believe I believe your belief must be anchored on the truth from the word of God there must be something you have heard from him that creates a picture in your mind that solidifies your conviction to believe God beyond every reasonable doubt and when you are able to believe God beyond every reasonable doubt you escape that realm of doubt to the realm of faith you can see the power of God at work again and again and again are we together here? And that's the reason why it is important that you pay attention to what you are going to hear tonight. Some of you, this is your miracle. What you will hear. Just this one. This is just what you need in this service. By the time we stand up to pray, some of you would have already entered into the realm where your miracle is. By reason of what you will hear. Isaiah 43 verse 19. 43 verse 19. 
43 verse 19. He said, Behold, I will do a new thing. And this is the very, very amazing part of this verse. He said, Now it shall spring forth. Excuse me. He said, Behold, I will do. That's future, isn't it? That's future tense. I will do. If it stops, if the verse stopped at the first sentence, what you have by reason of that verse is hope, not faith. Hope is an expectation of tomorrow that you know God is able to do it but there is no time no time has been pointed or no time has been fixed for when what you know God will do will be done so if the verse stopped at this first sentence what you have is just hope that cannot produce anything for you sadly many believers what they claim is faith is not faith what they claim they have and they call faith is not faith is hope one of the ways to know that you have faith is that there is a time allocated to your expectation. I believe God will do it when he wants to do it. That's not faith. That is hope. And for many believers, it has eluded them or it has robbed them of receiving from God every time God appears to bless his people. It's not just enough to believe that God can do it. It is enough to believe that God can do it now. Somebody shout now. now. That's why the next part of this verse is very interesting. He said, now it shall spring forth. Behold, I will do. Yet he's saying, now. When is he going to do it? Now. Is there such a thing as your miracle now? I came to tell you tonight that yes, there is. And it is very possible. I will show you from the word of God many instances where as soon as God said it, it happened. So that while you stand up to pray and as you are praying, what you have been praying for, the need, the expectation will be converted to a testimony right there. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. It sounds strange, isn't it? Some of you are okay. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 27 to 28. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 27 to 28. And then at some point I will I will have us to stand up to pray pray some scriptures into our life. One of the powerful ways to pray, in fact the most powerful way to pray is to pray with scriptures. Let me teach you how to attack a problem in your life. Don't just go and pray blindly. No. Look for provisions in scripture that deals with that problem. Open it. Read it. Meditate on it. Confess it and pray it. Do you hear what I said? Open it. Read it. Meditate on it. Confess it and pray. The reason why many people pray and they don't see results is not because God didn't hear them. God had them. But God may not understand what they are saying because what they are saying is not captured within the language he understands, which is his word. The boundary of God's dealings are his word. Outside that, God will not act. So when next you want to pray about an issue, first of all, look for where it is written. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What kind of prayer do you think Jesus was praying for 40 days in the wilderness? You think he was just praying in tongues like that? No. Remember the baptism of John. A voice spoke. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word or by the voice of God. The voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus caught that voice. And that was what he was praying for the next 40 days in the wilderness. I am God's beloved son and he is pleased in me. I am God. That was what he was praying. That's why Satan came. And the first temptation was what? If you are the son of God. Satan heard him confessing it in prayer for 40 days. Don't just go blindly and pray. No. That's why you have not seen it happen. You are tormented by witchcraft. Look for the provision in the word of God that handles judgment. And present it in prayer. You will know that you don't need to pray more than a day for God to answer. 
The problem is not in his hearing. The problem is in his answering. For him to answer. It, this, God we are, this God we talk about is a just God. That's the reason why you must have good command of scripture. Let me show you something else. Just so you can believe in what I call the miracle of the now. Or the God of the now. He said, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in your power to do so. He said, do not say to your neighbor, go and come back and tomorrow I will give it. When you have it with you. In other words, there's no need for you to go and come back tomorrow. There's no need for you to wait for another Sunday. There's no need for you to wait for another miracle service. Say, when it is available now for you. And the God that we serve, the last time I checked my Bible, in Hebrews 11, 6, it says he is a rewarder. A rewarder. Huh? Of them that diligently seek him. Leviticus 19, verse 13. God gave the children of Israel a law that he expected they should live by. And here is what he told them. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 13. He said, You shall not cheat your neighbor nor rob him. The wages of him who is hired shall not remain with you all night until morning. So even God will not permit you to keep what belongs to another person overnight. If you can give it to him that day, give it to him that day. Now, if God can determine this for us, how much more he himself? Remember the Bible says he has exalted his word more than his name. That means that God himself is bounded by this scripture. If God is saying that you should not keep what belongs to your neighbor overnight, even him, God, will not keep the miracle that belongs to you for tomorrow. You didn't hear what I said. I thought you would have cut, cut that with an amen. I'm saying that the miracle that is yours for today, God will not shift it to tomorrow. Amen. He will give it to you when? Now. Shout it again. Now. Shout it with faith. Now. The God of the now. I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 that says, Behold, now is the acceptable time, and now is the time, the day of salvation. Now you have to believe. That God is so powerful that at that very instant He can bring to pass what you have expected, what you have waited for. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Let's sing it again. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord What we waited for, what we waited for Has come to pass See what the Lord has done Can you sing it to your neighbor? See what the Lord has done See what the Lord has done Come on, sing it to him because he's about to see what God is going to do in your life tonight. What we waited for, what we waited for, has come to pass. Can you sing it one more time if you believe it? See what the Lord has done. What you waited for right now yes, Sit down <laughs> Sit down briefly Just sit down for a moment I'm telling you, many of you will be shocked at what could happen tonight <laughs> It's God. I know him. Are you hearing me? I don't know about you, but me, I know him. I know him. That's why I'm representing him. Some of you, the moment you are standing up, 
your long awaited breakthrough will be standing right before you if you believe that scream it louder amen listen you have to believe that God is powerful you have to one of the reasons why witchcraft and charm works powerfully is not because the devil is so powerful it's because the people consulting him exercise faith even God and the devil needs your faith one of God's greatest obsession is to be believed when a man can believe God beyond every reasonable doubt it's like the mightiness of God's power is unlocked one of the things that provokes God to move amongst the people is faith absolute faith so the God we serve is the God of the now in the Bible there are what I call same day miracles same day miracles please be seated same day miracles genesis 26 verse 32 i want you to pay attention very well because as you listen faith will be built in your spirit to believe god for what he's about to do that's why i want to show you there are miracles in scripture that i call same day miracles miracles that happen the same day it came to pass the same day isn't it that what happened Isaac's servant came and told him about the well which they had dug and said to him we have found water when did they find it the same day there are same day miracles Isaac had been persecuted by the Philistines when you read verses before this verse all the wells he was digging they kept seizing it and you know at that time Isaac was into farming agriculture and there was famine in the land so by seizing those wells there was no access to water and the crops were going to die but that same day god did not wait for another day that same day can i give you more ah i have enough enough of them exodus chapter 12 verse 41 and 51 i want to show you how deliverance can happen for a whole family in one day 41 and 51 and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years that what happened on that very same day the fact that it was 430 years of captivity of slavery didn't mean that it would take more than a day for their deliverance to come on that very same day what happened it came to pass that all the armies of the lord Did your Bible not say that who has ever heard Isaiah 66 verse 8? Your own Bible said it. That who has ever heard such a thing? Or who have seen such things? It says, shall the earth be made to bring give to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? Yet, as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. Even an entire nation can be delivered in one day. Your family is too small. Your finance is too small. That devil that has been a blockage around your life, that has not allowed you to experience breakthroughs that will bring you in sync with the plan of God, I arrest that, that devil by the fire of the Holy Ghost. And every door that has been closed, I command them today, not tomorrow, today, be open. I said be open in the name of jesus christ keep standing we are going to pray verse 51 and it came to pass on that very same day that the lord brought the children of israel out of the land of egypt according to their armies according to their tribes over three million people in one day left bondage left captivity so when we begin to pray this night if the chain of the enemy has been cycled around several members of your family wherever they are on the earth, on the face of the earth one by one everybody will experience deliverance as a matter of fact i didn't tell you that this miracle service is divided into two 
The first segment is a segment for miracles. The, the second segment is a segment for judgment. Because God spoke to me on Tuesday night. He said, son, your people will never experience true liberation and breakthrough until certain people around them fall down. Elohim told me, oh. So I came this night to release the judgment of God. If you don't believe in that, no problem. Just follow us and pray. Are you ready to pray? They were delivered in the same day because of the mystery of the blood. That same night when the blood of the Passover was spread on their lintel posts, the Bible says God slew the firstborn of Egypt and every one of them experienced deliverance. Are you ready to pray for deliverance? Let that be the first miracle that God will do for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I invoke the mystery of the blood. The mystery of the blood to override and overrule every satanic agenda in my life. And I call, I call forth my deliverance now, now, now. Open your mouth and pray. I said open your mouth and pray. By the mystery of the blood, every satanic yoke every demonic embargo be overruled be overrided i can't hear you pray by the power that is in the blood of jesus and let your deliverance come now let your deliverance come today somebody raise your voice and cry raise your voice and cry raise your voice and cry let every satanic agenda be scattered, be destroyed by the mystery of the blood. Every yoke on your finances, every yoke in your family, every yoke on your marital status, every yoke on your academics, every impediment of the enemy on your life, let it be overrided by the mystery of the blood. By the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Are you praying? I receive my deliverance now. I receive my deliverance now. I receive my deliverance today. I receive my deliverance today. In Jesus name, we pray. You are not only receiving for yourself, but you are receiving for your loved ones and everyone that is connected to you. They are implicated by these prayers in the name of Jesus. Please be seated for a few minutes. We are going to rise to pray again. It is important to know that there is no deliverance without judgment. It is important to know that God's people may never experience deliverance without the release of divine judgment every time there is a need for the ministry of deliverance it is because the people of god are tied or are held up in captivity it is because the people of god have been placed under impediments under yokes under obstacles under obstructions satanic vices that are there to ensure that they don't break free one of the first things that we are promised in salvation is freedom, is liberty. God wants his people set free and to live free. So every time it seems as though there is a, a, a blockage or there seems to be an obstacle limiting your progress, 
limiting your rising limiting your 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 freelance as far as life and destiny is concerned then there is need for deliverance that tells you that the enemy is at work at that portion or that part of your life first of all what is deliverance deliverance is simply device separation of an individual from any spirit from any system that seems to hold that individual bound or that denies that individual access to the experience of his heritage in Christ whether it is a spirit whether it is a mindset whether it is a pattern whatever it is anytime people are not where God has destined them to be it means that they are held bound or held captive by something that the enemy has projected around them but today in the name of Jesus deliverance is coming to you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ it is important to know that they were the children of God the children of Israel were God's covenant people but they were held in captivity it is possible for a man to be anointed and still be in captivity are you hearing me some of you all that you have been praying for is actually deliverance you need is deliverance you need once you are set free the same people around you that have refused to help you will rally around to help you the same opportunities that keep passing you will come to your back and call some of us what we truly need is just deliverance we need to be separated from some ancestral yokes in fact there are people who are fighting battles they don't even know they are fighting battles they don't even know they are held back by certain impediments that are sponsored by wicked spirits and so it is important that now and today your deliverance comes to you and i tell you i told you that before deliverance there is judgment Deliverance can never happen except God releases his judgment against the enemy. The Bible says in Psalms 9 verse 16 that the Lord is known by the judgment which he executes. The wicked is snared in the works of his hands. The Lord is known. One of the ways to know God is when he arises as the God of justice, equity and judgment. For a long time you may know Jesus as the Lamb but it's also important that a time in your life comes where he roars like a lion very important i told you last week that the same god of love is the god that calls himself a consuming fire first kings chapter 13 verse 3 to 5 let me show you an example as an example of where judgment was released in one day And he gave a sign the same day saying this is the sign which the Lord has spoken surely the altar shall split apart and the ashes on it shall be poured out verse 5 and so it came to pass when King Jeroboam verse 5 the altar also was split apart and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. In other words, the same day that the word of God was released by the prophet was the same day that evil altar was judged. Altars are systems that legitimize the operation of spirits on the earth. Every time a spirit is at work in a family or in an individual's life, there is an altar sponsoring it. Yes, altars may be physical monuments, but beyond physical monuments, there are spiritual gateways. There are spiritual portals. You can destroy the monument, but the portal is still there activated. For as long as that spirit keeps operating in your life, keeps toying with your finances, keeps driving every good man that comes around you, so that you don't get married when God wants you to, it is because there is an altar. Demonic attacks can happen once. And if you may call that a demonic coincidence, if there's something like that. But when it begins to happen again, when you find the same attacks again and again, particularly at a, a period of time, brothers and sisters, you are dealing with an altar. 
It's not just to say, come out in the name of Jesus. No. There is an altar legitimizing that o- the operation of that spirit. Spirits are not fools. They understand, they, understand, they understand legal systems. They know they have no right to function on earth. So if a spirit is operating on earth, it is, he is operating in, on earth because he has been legitimized by a family or by an individual. There are some of you here tonight, ref- respectfully speaking, you truly need certain altars in your foundations to be dealt with once and for all. Some of you don't even know that there are altars. Some of you, I, I was talking with somebody yesterday from Abuja, and we spoke about his spiritual, one of his spiritual daughter. And as soon as he mentioned the name, my eyes opened in the spirit. We're not talking about her. We're just discussing other things. And then he mentioned the name of the lady. My eyes opened in the spirit realm. And I saw something dark like smoke coming from the ground. Coming from the ground. And God said, altars of father's house. And I began to prophesy to him. I I told him, I said, this lady, God wants to visit her. But God needs to separate her from the powers of her father's house. And it is because of the mistakes that the man committed. This was what he confirmed to me that the father actually was involved with many women and you know there's that kind of pattern in the family but that's why we need the prophetic what god showed me was beyond the father because the young lady was angry with her father and she had been distant from her father meanwhile god was showing me that this thing started from her great grandfather somebody say altars you have to believe it too. They are real. Let me tell you. They are real. If you find a family just prospering anyhow, anyhow, as though there is no Satan, it's either somebody has enacted an altar and has made a fraternity with Satan, or somebody has, uh, uh, has raised an altar before Yeshua. Only Yeshua will reign forever. Oh, his kingdom, there'll be no end. Somebody must have raised an altar before God. Some of you are here. What you are enjoying now, you know that you are not, you, you know that you and God, you are not serious. You pray today, and the next time you pray is next month. You still have all kinds of, ga- ga- your friends are gangs. You have all kinds of people around you. But it seems as though everything is working for you. Could it be that your grandmother was an intercessor and she raised an altar? Though she is dead many years ago, but that altar is speaking. The Bible says of Abel, he says he was justified by God that though he was dead, yet his blood was speaking. This night and today, any evil altar that has sponsored the activity of darkness in your family and in your life, some of you this poverty respectfully speaking in your family is not that you people are lazy everybody is hard working everybody is doing one thing or the other to survive but how long will you continue this survival mentality god did not create you to survive he said he said subdue and have dominion i want to prophesy before we stand up to pray that altar of poverty that has been speaking in somebody's family it comes to an end this night in the name of jesus i said that altar is destroyed now and forever in the name of jesus christ stand on your feet let's pray i want you to raise your voice and in the name of jesus confront every evil altar around your life around your family visible or invisible whether you are aware of it or not that is speaking evil that is speaking reproach that is speaking shame that is speaking poverty that is speaking resistance that is speaking bad luck lift your voice and confront it confront it confront it Rakapa <laughs> 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 
In the name of Jesus Christ. The same day that the prophet spoke was the very same day. I like that scripture. He said the altar was split apart. I think in the verse 3 it, it says into pieces. Nothing must remain again. I prophesy over your life. I don't care whether it is 10 generations ago, 42 generations ago. Every altar of darkness that has been speaking, I feel the power of God already. Every altar of darkness that is speaking shame, that is speaking reproach, that is speaking poverty, that is speaking rejection, I command that altar be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. Be destroyed by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Ah. After tonight, some of you will know that God has risen for you in your life and in your family. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Judgment against wickedness. Let's continue our discourse. I'm still showing you what I call same day miracles. Esther chapter 9 verse 1 to 5. Are you enjoying it at all? Some of you will use this teaching tonight as a key. I'm telling you as a key. All I need to know is where it is written in the word of God. As long as it is written, it can be enforced. God does not need to do it again. Let me just see that God has written it. You know what Archbishop Benzi Daosa said when he challenged the witches? He said, if God does not need to come down, the witch say, even God cannot stop their international meeting. Benzi Daosa said, God does not need to come down. If God is in heaven, let him remain there. And Benzi is on earth. I'm not that kind of Christian that will keep crying to God. No. Let me just see that it is written. I'll deal with the devil myself. The Bible didn't call the devil the adversary of God. He said, the devil is your adversary. And he said, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions. There's no need, the, all of these childish Christianities, uh, you know, all of this, you, you keep crying, well, will my help? No, no, no. Once I can see that it is written, God has done his part. I understand how to enforce it by prayer. And I, I, I will pounce on the head of that viper until he releases it. Esther 9 verse 1 to 5. 1 to 5. Thus the Jews, okay, now in the 12th month, that is the month of Ada, on the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them. You see what happened? The opposite occurred. In that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. After tonight, you will start pursuing what has been pursuing you. Everything that has limited you, you will rise and become a victor over. In the name of Jesus Christ. The same day that was marked for their execution, rather it was the enemy that was executed. I think it's in Psalm 7, in verse 15 or 16, where it says that he dug a pit and he has fallen into it. The same day. The same day. Give us Esther 9, let's read verse 5. Let's read from verse 2 down to verse 5. Esther chapter 9. From verse 2 down to verse 5. The Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought their harm. And no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all the people. 
Verse 5 now. Verse 5. Paul's the Jews defeated all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, with slaughter and destruction, and did what they pleased with those who hated them. Stand up, let's pray. The battle was overturned in the favor of the Jews in the same day that they were supposed to be defeated. In the same day that they were supposed to dis be destroyed. Say after me, every battle and every decree every decree against my life against my life do you believe these prayers you are praying every battle every battle and every decree and every decree against my life against my life be turned in my favor 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 in the name of jesus in the name of jesus pray that for just 60 seconds open your mouth and pray that every battle every decree every decree be overturned in my favor be overturned in my favor whatever was decreed against you whatever was spoken against you every battle against your life let it be overturned let it be overturned he said for I will overturn 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 says the Lord unto he whose right it is and I will cause that it be given to him only Yeshua to and forever to his kingdom Only Yeshua to and forever to his kingdom there be no They are Overturn, overturn, overturn. Let that battle be overturn. Let that battle be overturn. Let that battle be overturn. Overturn, overturn, overturn. Let the decree be cancelled. Let the battle be overturn. Let the battle over your destiny be overturn. Let the battle over your finances be overturn. Let the battle over your ministry, over your calling be overturn. Overturn, overturn. Overturn, says the Lord. In Jesus name we pray before you sit down give us verse 17 of that same chapter verse 17 and 18 I want to show you something I want to prophesy something over your life just follow the way the service is going okay Verse 17 of Esther chapter 9. That was the scripture, please. Verse 17. While the enemy was destroyed, something was happening to God's people. And that's what I want to prophesy over you. I pray that you will receive it with faith. He said, this was on the 13th day of the month of Ada. And on the 14th day of the month, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. While the enemy were destroyed, the people of God were feasting with gladness. I prophesy. Job chapter 8 verse 21 to 22. That's my prophecy for you. The Bible says, He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with rejoicing. I declare and decree over your life. As God brings judgment against your enemy, let your mouth be filled with laughter 
and let your life be filled with rejoicing in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says that they feasted with gladness in the name of Jesus the abundance that will cause that scripture to find expression in your life receive it now I say receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down John chapter 5 verse 9 there are same day miracles I'm rounding up now there are same day miracles and immediately the man was made well he took up his bed and walked and that day was the Sabbath that very same day the man was made well that same day he was visited God will visit somebody today in the name of Jesus Christ John chapter 20 verse 19 more miracles this is what I call the miracle of visitation in verse 19 the Bible tells us that Jesus that same day of his resurrection he appeared to his disciples in other words he revealed himself for some of you you didn't come here tonight because you need a miracle in your finance you didn't come here because you need a breakthrough or you need a change of story or you need deliverance what you just need is divine visitation you need the portals of the realm of the spirit to open for you you have been going through spiritual dryness or perhaps you have been experiencing god but at a level and you need the lord to appear to you and reveal himself the bible says that the lord appeared unto samuel again in shiloh tonight is your shiloh and i prophesy over your life receive divine visitation today in the name of jesus christ acts chapter 2 verse 41 same day miracles this is the miracle that i call the miracle of explosive growth in one day a church of 120 members grew to 5,000. he said then those who gladly received this word were baptized and that day about sorry about how many thousand three thousand i said five thousand sorry three thousand souls that same day remember they had waited for 10 days in the upper room jesus spoke to 500 of them on the mountain he said go to jerusalem and tarry by the tenth day 380 had left they were tired of waiting when god seems to be slow in your life or when god seems to delay you it's because he has a way of bringing the entire package in one day are you hearing that are you hearing what I'm, i call that one explosive wonders they waited for 10 days 120 people but in one day what happened 3,000 people were added for some of you God will add all the helpers you need to fulfill destiny today <laughs> that one call will come to you today and after that call you will go back to your diary and write this day in history I hope you know there are certain days in your life you can never forget for some people the days they can never forget is the saddest day of their life how about the greatest day of your life can i prophesy to you that day is today i don't know what your expectations are but today becomes that day where you will experience explosive wonders in the name of jesus christ for some of you you may not it may not be for your ministry for some of you it may be for your business you have done everything that you can do but the business keeps dying how that God will lift your business in one day. In one day. You don't need many clients. One client is enough. Somebody to just call you and say, I heard that you, are, you do so, 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 and so. Uh, well, okay, can you produce 100 pieces of it? Give me your quotation. And then you that you have been struggling with people around 10,000, 20,000, you are writing a quotation of 1 million. I shared with you my story. How that we entered a particular year and the Lord spoke to me to empty my account. And I emptied it. And for two weeks, that was how I remained broke. I remember that particular night. It was on the, the day, the date was 18th. 
I went to bed with 88 naira in my account. Not 88,000. 88 naira. Are you hearing me? You can't even borrow from that one. They'll say you, you, you don't have access to this service. Is that not so? I went to sleep with 88 naira. And then I had a dream. I saw three people discussing. And I was standing apart from them. And they were pointing me. And then I heard one of them said, let us give it to him. When I woke up, I saw two point something million in my account. In one day. I only saw a sender of one million. Where the other one point something came from, I don't know till today. Do you believe that? Can I prophesy that level of financial explosion? And by the grace of God, this is something we have seen again and again and again. Are you hearing me? The one that happened this week, I can't tell you. Somebody will arrest me if I say it now. So I prophesy, in one day, may God turn around your financial life. May God turn your financial fortunes around. And let that day be today. In the name of Jesus. Be seated. There are same day miracles. But guess what? It gets better. There are same hour miracles. Let me show you. Matthew chapter 8 verse 13. The healing of the centurion servant. Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way your, as you have believed, so let it be done for you. Look at it on the screen. And his servant was healed. When? That same hour. It's okay to say today, that same day. So you may have to wait. Maybe you keep waiting till 12 midnight. But how about in that one hour? In that one hour. Matthew chapter 10 verse 19. The scripture says that in that very hour when you appear before the council, it says you will be inspired with what to speak. Some of you are called into professions that will around that you speak. Maybe you are communicationists, you are facilitators in one way or another. And you have stage fright, you are afraid of talking to people. Hear what the Bible says, this is a miracle of inspiration. It says you will not worry about what you should say. For in that same hour, some of you are even called into ministry. And God has been pushing you to go out to preach, to win souls. To go out and evangelize. To go out. And use your voice to market the gospel. But you are afraid. You are timid. You don't know what to say. The Bible says in that same hour. There is a miracle called the miracle of inspiration. It just comes there. Same hour miracles. In Luke chapter 7 verse 21. Many people were healed at the same hour. They were healed of their infirmities. Their afflictions and evil spirits. In John chapter 4 verse 53 There was the healing of the nobleman's son The son of the nobleman was healed in the same hour that Jesus spoke to him Surprisingly Jesus didn't lay hands on the son The man traveled to where Jesus was And Jesus said go your way How many of you will do that one? After traveling several kilometers Say no you must follow me like Jarius He said please come and lay your hands Jesus said no I don't need to come Go your way and the Bible says while the man was on his way back, his servants met him. I, I believe. And the Bible says he asked them when his son was healed. And it was the same hour. So as I'm speaking now, some of you, the miracle is already waiting for you at home. In fact, some of you may need to keep your phone on. Because the, the alert, the message may just hit your phone without you knowing. I'm telling you. Some of you may even need to put your data on. The mail may just come. Does a, how will a job employment come on Sunday? Wait. When the God of now arises on your behalf, they will send that mail on Sunday. You say, but Apostle, the last time I applied for that job was four months ago. Who cares? There are same hour miracles. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. If you don't believe it, then forget about seeing those possibilities. Can I go on? I want us to pray now. I want to minister. The, the, the anointing is strong here. I want to just, 
I want to trust God that will minister to some people tonight. There will be miracles here. In fact, I'm sensing that there will be financial miracles. I can sense it. I'm telling you, I can sense it. Keep your phone on. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Uh huh. In Acts chapter 16, verse 18. The very same hour Paul casted out the demon that was troubling that lady. Remember the lady who kept prophesying? The lady that was prophesying by the spirit of divination. The same hour that Paul commanded the spirit to come out was the same hour that she was delivered. I remember those days when, <laughs> Bishop, you remember, it was the time that uh, while we were in school, I believe. They brought one deliverance case to us. And we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And thank God that we sent everybody away. It was only the two of us. So we, only two of us took the shame. <laughs> we prayed. The demon will not come out. We prayed. Sometimes she will sit down. Sometimes she will stand up. Sometimes she will do as if the demon is coming out. Then she, at a point she just told us, say, see, I'm not going. I mean... <laughs> We did everything, every I mean everything you know to do. It was frustrating. Amen. But we didn't give up. Today now you see you are here and you can see that while speaking, the power of God just sets people free, even without touching them. At least we are coming from somewhere. Amen. So if you are here and you have tried casting out demons and it didn't go out, don't 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 worry. Just keep pressing. Today you receive the grace for the demon to come out at once. In Acts chapter 16 verse 33. How about receiving help? Divine help in the same hour. In Acts 16 33. Paul and Silas. The same night when God broke through their prison. The Bible says the same hour of the night. Their stripes, their wounds were washed. God sends them help at midnight, the same hour. God sends help. God sends help. God sends help. So how do you access or how do you bring the God of the now to come to walk in your life? How do you accept or how do you access instant miracles? That's what we we'll call it. All right? The miracle of the now is what we call instant miracles. How do you access this manifestation? Three things and then we'll pray. Isaiah 65 verse 24. The first key is by prayer. The first key is by prayer. Isaiah 65 verse 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will what? Answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. We read Psalms 102 verse 3 last week. At verse 2 rather. We read it last week where he said, Answer me speedily. Not just any kind of prayer. What I call traveling prayer. The prayer of travail. You pray that kind of prayer that Elijah prayed until there was a cloud like the size of a man's hand whenever you need instant miracles you must learn to pray that way you must learn to pray yourself into the manifestation isaiah 68 66 verse 8 he said as soon as zion traveled she brought forth as soon as zion traveled so traveling prayers is the first key the second key is the prophetic the prophetic and when i talk about the prophetic here i'm not talking about revelatory prophecy no you are wearing so so and so your name is so so and so no no you don't need that often when you need a breakthrough you don't need that kind of prophecy you need creative prophecies are you hearing me there's no need to tell me how old i am or my date of birth when i'm in a mess and i need god to arise instantly all I need to hear from you is thus said the Lord by this time tomorrow. In fact, the more powerful dimension of prophecy is the creative part. Are you hearing me? The creative part. 
when the word is spoken and you instantly begin to see the manifestation and that's why tonight when i open my mouth to make declarations over you i want you to i want you to embrace prophetic declarations i want you to embrace it very well because this is not your ear is hearing the words that i'm saying but the spirit behind what i'm saying is entering into your life and bringing instant creativity according to that which was said so don't think you are just hearing the prophecy no something is happening in your life that you don't know so when i release prophetic declaration swallow it and receive it with all of your heart know it fully well that as you heard it it is done are we together so the prophetic is one key if god needs to move in the now if god needs to bring instant result he activates the prophetic that is why sometimes in my life when i need instant result or when i need instant visitation i know what to do one thing i like with the prophetic is it can be triggered something happened yesterday i did some things to my father in the lord by the way he sends us his greetings I did some things that I will not tell you. And then by 12 midnight, I saw his text message. He said, I've been seeing this, 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 and this that you are doing. He said, and I'm left to declare. You and your ministry in the month of March, you are shifting to another dimension. Yeah. Guess what? Me, I've entered it already. Because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 44 verse 20, verse 25, I believe. It says, he confirms the word of his servant and perfects the counsel of, the, of his messengers. Once God's servant opens his mouth to speak, it's as good as done. The word of the Lord in the mouth of God didn't do anything. It was the word of the Lord in the mouth of Ezekiel that caused the dry bones to come together. Huh? God was saying it. He says, say to them, prophesy and say, dry bone blah 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 nothing happened but the bible says and i prophesied as i was commanded and he said instantly there was a shaking and there was a noise and bone there are two things you see there by the prophetic the word the creative dimension of the word and the spirit the word of god brought the bones together the spirit brought life into it the third way to access instant miracles is by thanksgiving thanksgiving also provokes now miracles we're going to pray now did your bible not say in jeremiah 30 verse 19 out of them shall proceed what grumbling complaining some of us have have been complaining too much please listen here let me sound this i, I believe this is a word from the spirit to some of us here some of us have complained more than we have given thanks so every time the breakthrough is coming you open your mouth and complain and it was diverted check your life very well you will see they, they say they call it hate speech it's not hate speech it com it's complain we complain too much we grumble god when will you visit me and maybe he was going to visit you that day What did Jesus do in John chapter 6 verse 11? There was a problem already. Over 5,000 men, count, minus counting children and women, standing before him, all of them hungry for three days. One of his disciples said, even if we spend 200 denarii worth of, that's a, not, a lot of money. He said, we can't feed these people. There was already a situation. Andrew was already complaining. I think, was it Philip or Andrew? But the Bible says that Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks it's as if he knew that thanksgiving had instantly multiplied it he didn't even check to see if it if that may multiply he, he gave it to his disciples and the bible says they distributed it around to those who sat down and he fed everybody if you can stop complaining and start giving thanks some of you don't complain outwardly but in your heart your heart is full of complaint that's why you are sorrowful that's why you are always moody when will God answer me? Apostle, I've prayed. Apostle, I've even sown seed. I've fasted. Hold on. You are not the only one who... 
Are you hearing me? Somebody called me from another country. I just finished giving out well over a thousand dollars. And the person called me and said, Hey, Apostle, I don't know what's happening to my title. I don't know. Is it, is it that God is lying? Eh? Before God used to bless me over with my emplo- employer. And now I now that I say I want to do something for God, I want to give God one thousand dollars. Now they, they didn't give me surplus like before. I said, I say you called at the right time. It's now that you want to give. Me, I just finished giving. And I'm not complaining. Most times when you complain, God will show you other people who have gone through more than what you have gone through and didn't complain. Some of us, you have parents here who have suffered for many years, respectfully speaking. But you still see them joyful and you still see them committed to the things of God. They don't miss a service. You, you, you don't have transport, then you will not go to church. It's not like you don't have transport. You had it, you spend it on Wednesday. Then on Sunday, you didn't come. Why? I don't have transport. And you are following online now. I'm talking to you, I'm following online. <laughs> Amen. I love you, but you are following online now. You are supposed to be here. You say, hey, God knows that I don't have transport now. Can you quit complaining and be grateful? And now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Because of what? The Lord has done. Give thanks. Stand on your feet. Let's sing that song together. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. Jesus. If you don't have anything to be grateful for, at least be grateful for salvation. And now, and now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am Because of what? Wave your hands and give him thanks. Some of you need to thank him in advance for what he's about to do. Some of you need to thank him for what he has done. Forget about what you have gone through. You went through the fire and through the water, but he sustained you. He shielded you. He delivered you from evil. He delivered you from death. The devil would have taken you out long ago. The devil would have killed you with that sickness. But give him thanks because he's your deliverer. All the glory must be to the Lord. Lift your hands and let's declare it. For he is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to. Are you grateful tonight? All the glory must be to the Come on, all the glory must be saved. Can you lift your voice, lift your hands to the heaven and declare to Him?
more time. open your mouth and just pray in the spirit for a few minutes if you can just pray in other tongues the Lord is mighty the Lord in the midst of his people is mighty is mighty to see just pray in the spirit just pray in the spirit Building up your most holy things, scripture says, by praying in the spirit. The power of God is in this place. <laughs> Just keep praying, just keep Shall not be 
So we worship So we worship you, so we worship you. The presence and the power of God is here. One more time, say, so we worship because you're here tonight Almighty oh, God You are living Just be still everywhere if you can The power of God is in this place Worship you Almighty God, you are lifted up above. 
Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, that welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in. Can you lift your hands everywhere? The hand of the Lord is touching some people now. The hand of the Lord is about to rest on some people now. Just lift your hands everywhere. Let's allow God to just do what He wants to do. There is an impartation of the Spirit of God that is about to hit this place now. It's already here. In the next 60 seconds, I'll be quiet. But God is releasing something to some people here. Lift your hands and receive it. your hands and receive his presence. Just receive his presence. Please lift your hands. Two declarations now. The power of God will come on some people right now. And then after that we will pray for the sick. Because I sense a strong healing anointing. I see written on the air. Breakthrough. I just saw breakthrough written on the air. And the Lord said I should prophesy to seven families here. And as I do that the hand of God will come upon you where you are standing. He said, for the God of breakthroughs has broken through my enemies like a burst of water in the name of Jesus Christ. I release you into your breakthroughs now. I release you into strange dimensions of breakthroughs. I release it over those seven families now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord said whatever has held you down today receive the force that lifts you to a higher level receive the force that spring brought you to a higher ground receive the force that lifts you to a higher level 
in the name of Jesus. Anytime I see this vision, I know God, there are people specifically that God intends to do this for. There are people that God intends to open the doors of favor for. But specifically, there are some of us here. It is time for that door to open for your family. It is time for that door of favor to open. Just lift your hands. I see an angel pouring something like oil, oil, oil on the head of some people right now. I don't care where you are in life before now. In the name of Jesus, let the oil of favor be activated. Let the oil of favor be activated. Help them. Please help them. I activate that oil of favor. Receive that oil of favor. Receive the anointing for favor. Receive the anointing. Help them, please. Please help them. Receive that anointing of favor. Everywhere you have been rejected, go back and be accepted. Everywhere you have been rejected, go back and be accepted. In the name of Jesus. Just listen to me. I'm seeing, I'm seeing somebody, this is like an angel. I'm seeing him carrying a huge bag. And inside that bag, I see all kinds of currency. I'm seeing money in that bag. I don't know who is here, but I want to speak over your financial life. I want to speak over your finances. There's such a thing as the wealth of the kingdom. If your hands are lifted, I want you to receive this prophecy now. In the name that is above every other name, I shift you to dimensions of wealth. Strange dimensions of wealth. Supernatural wealth, access to wealth in the name of Jesus Christ. Believe it, there's such a thing as the power to get wealth. He said, You know, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich. Yet for your sake he became poor, that he through his poverty or you might be rich. It says in Psalm 66 that you brought us through fire and water, but you have brought us to the wealthy place. I want to speak again over your life and over your family. In the name of Jesus Christ and by the God of the heavens, I shift you to a dimension of wealth. I shift you to a dimension of wealth. Let the storehouses of heaven be opened unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to speak against your life again, over your life again. Just listen and lift your hands. God is asking me to declare open doors in the month of March. I don't know who is here and I don't know who is ready to, to receive something. Whether in your career, whether in your finances, whether in your spiritual life, whether in your marriage, doors of fruitfulness, doors of finances, doors of favor, every door that has been closed against you, I declare a father, be open. Be open now. I declare open doors for you. Open doors for you. Open doors for you. Open doors for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm still declaring it again because I see I see an individual standing and I see doors opening one after another. One after another. So it's not just one door. In the name of Barakotos Kapata. I command every closed door over your life in tonight and today in this place be open now I said be open now be open now in the name of Jesus for some of you it's not just one door that will open several doors will open at once 
I speak over your lives and I pray in the name of Jesus that the hand of God who is the lifter of men will stretch forth towards you will hold your right hand and will lift you to your desired place in destiny I declare wherever you are in life right now be lifted I declare over you be lifted be lifted be lifted in the name of Jesus and father I declare tonight over this place and those that are following online let there be all kinds of miracles let there be all kinds of miracles let the miraculous break out in this place right now miracle of finances miracle of alerts text messages and emails that will bring your miracle receive it now miracle of help miracle of fruitfulness miracle of deliverance miracle of breakthroughs i speak by the power of the holy ghost let this place become a harvest of miracles in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus wave your hands and give him praise can we pray for the sick now I want you to put your right hand wherever you have a condition in your body whatever part of your, your body is being troubled by one sickness or affliction probably you've been taking medications you've been taking drugs just put your right hand there but frankly speaking I have a strong witness in my spirit that there will be more healings for those that are connecting from far away those that are following online where whatever part of the world you are following us from right now this is your moment to be healed this is your moment to be set free of every affliction the bible says in that same hour luke chapter 7 it says that he cured them of their infirmities of their afflictions and of their of evil spirits the power of God is able to heal. Place your right hand where you have a pain or where you have anything troubling you in your body. And let's agree tonight for your healing. The healing power of God is in this place. Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here right now. To raise set the captives free. Oh, Jesus is here right now. You are the Lord that He led me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word. Wherever you are following this meeting from, I want you to believe that God is able to heal. He did that 2,000 years and plus ago. The Bible declares by the stripe on the back and the body of Jesus, we are healed by his stripes. God is about to heal you and God is going to heal you right now. Whether you are following from a hospital, from your home, from your office, or you are on transit wherever you are just put your right hand where you have the condition and including those of us that are here right now just put your right hand i sense that the healing power of god will touch people tonight before i pray for the sick the power of god is going to come on somebody here this row all of you here just lift your hands if you can the power of god is going to come on somebody right now 
And as soon as that happens, the flow of the anointing will be released and I'll begin to minister. God is going to heal people. The power of God is going to come on about two people. It's going to be strong. It's, you can't stand. It's going to be very strong. And then I'll begin to pray. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord. You sent your word and healed my disease. Please bring that lady that will shout loud under the anointing. I'm seeing you are wearing your sleeve is not full. The sleeve of the clothes you are wearing is not complete. It's halfway. It's like close to the elbow and I saw the power of God come on that lady right now she will shout very loud just bring her I'm about to pray for the sick right now father in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to shout that amen, amen. father in the name of Jesus amen. father in the name of Jesus God is going to heal blood conditions. Father, in the name of Jesus. Once you get that lady that will shout under the anointing, just bring her, then I will minister. I'm saying things, but I can't move until I get that sign. Father, in the name of Jesus. All right, that's it. I take authority against affliction. I take authority against disease. I take authority against sickness. I take authority against the powers of the enemy. And in the name of Jesus, I command that devil of darkness to let you go now. Every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of affliction, I command you, be gone now. In the name of Jesus. And I declare over your people, be healed. I said, be healed. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed right now. Be healed in your body. Be healed in your bloodstreams. Be healed in your cells. Be healed in your organs. Be healed in your tissues. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a lady, God is healing you. I see something like a growth around, forgive me to say, around your breast region. Around your breast. It's like under. It's like underneath. Like a growth. There's like a swelling there. It dissolves right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I sense that anointing for lumps. Every lump, whether cancer, whether cancer, whether lymphoma, whether uh, uh, um, tumor, whatever kind of swelling in the name of Jesus be dissolved now I said be dissolved now in the name of Jesus Christ sugar diabetes be healed now in the name of Jesus high blood pressure go back to normal in the name of Jesus in fact, God is showing me at least three people under that category. I command high blood pressure, low blood pressure, become normal now. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody, there's something like a swelling around your cheek one of your cheek there's something like a swelling it's beginning to swell gradually around one of your cheeks one of your sides on your jaw 
in the name of Jesus I declare be healed now be healed now toothache of any kind be healed now missing tooth be replaced now in the name of Jesus even if you were operated before and the tooth was removed right there where that tooth was removed let a new tooth be replaced now I declare a new tooth now in the name of Jesus with all due respect this is I see God is healing somebody this is like mouth odor it's like mouth odor it's, it's mysterious it's not something it's not because you are not clean but just something I don't know what it is but it's like bad breath, bad breath as it were but God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus Christ every bone condition hear the word of the Lord let bones come to the bones now let bones be joined to their bones now bone condition of any kind be healed now in the name of Jesus I see somebody that is on drip you are, you are a female you are a female you are on drip right now I declare healing to your body in the name of Jesus and I declare strength to your body in the name of Jesus Christ eye conditions of any kind be healed now in the name of Jesus respiratory conditions be healed in the name of Jesus and every affliction that was caused by a demon spirit I arrest that spirit now and I command you out of their bodies out of their bodies out of their lives in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ whether I mention your case or not by the power that raised Jesus from the dead I declare from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet be healed now in the name of Jesus thank you father blessed be your name please wave your hands and give the Lord praise just wave your hands to him just wave your hands to him just wave your hands to him I see God healing somebody on your leg and I'm led to tell you to stamp that leg I don't know what the problem was but it's like you experience pains on that leg put it on the ground and stamp it God is healing you God is setting people free right now no you don't have to distract us just do it coordinatedly just wave your hands please keep waving your hands give the Lord praise as you wave your hands the Lord is setting people free of captivity blessed be the name of the Lord you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised my Redeemer you are worthy to be you are worthy Please, while we are all standing, I'll do two things and then we'll take a few testimonies and we are done. I'm going to lead, I'm going to make the altar call right now to pray for those who need to accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior and those who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus again. 